we're going to be looking at an analysis of a video done by Rabbi Tobias Singer entitled, Who Was Jesus? Did Hillel invent the Christian Eucharist? As I've stated in other videos, it's important to provide references to the quotes someone is using. And that's what I intend to do in this video to prove that Luke said Jesus was a ransom and that Jesus was a ransom for our sins. I aim to prove that Jesus was a ransom who died for our sins. But, lo and behold, Rabbi Tobias Singer's position is, Luke never said that. Luke did not say Jesus died for our sins. And Luke never said that Jesus was a ransom. I'm going to prove that Luke did say Jesus died for our sins. And Luke did say that Jesus was a ransom. We're going to be looking at the book of Luke, and we're going to take the quotes from the complete Jewish Bible, edited by Rabbi Barry Rubin, published in 2016, and copyrighted by the late David H. Stern. Yes, it's true. There are Jewish rabbis who believe in Jesus as the Messiah. And they've even translated the Tanakh and the New Testament into English so that we can understand what Hashem says about the Messiah. So here we have, and I'm going to play a clip for you, from the video posted by Rabbi Tobias Singer, the video entitled, Who is Jesus? Did Hillel invent the Christian Eucharist? You can hear this at minute 4, 42. And Luke, Luke did not hold to the theology that Jesus died for your sins as a ransom. So here we clearly hear Rabbi Tobias Singer saying, Luke did not hold to the theology that Jesus died for your sins as a ransom. Okay, let's go to the source. And I'm telling you here, I am looking at the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68, from the complete Jewish Bible. This is the New Testament. That's what Rabbi Singer was quoting and were referring to. He didn't quote it. He referred to it. I'm going to quote it. I'm going to put the words up on the screen for you. It says in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68, Praised be Adonai, the God of Israel, because he has visited and made a ransom to liberate his people. Now, you might jump to the conclusion and say, that's not talking about Jesus. That's not referring to him. But in order to eliminate your misconception, if you have one, let's read more of this portion of Scripture in Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, verse 68, Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, declares that God has fulfilled his promise to send the Messiah to earth. And here we read, Praised be Adonai, the God of Israel, because he has visited and made a ransom to liberate his people by raising up for us a mighty deliverer who is a descendant of his servant David. It is just as he has spoken through the mouth of the prophets from the very beginning that we should be delivered from our enemies and from the power of all who hate us. 
This has happened so that he might show the mercy promised to our fathers, that he would remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore before Avraham Avinu, to grant us that we, free from our enemies, would serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, before him all our days. You, child, will be called the prophet of ha Elion. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way. So here Zachariah says, You, my son, John the Baptist, you're going to be a prophet for the Lord, for this one who is going to be made a ransom to liberate his people, a ransom. What is this Messiah going to pay? How is he going to pay? If we read further in the book of Luke, which, by the way, was originally written in Greek, not Hebrew, translated into English by people who understand the Greek, we are going to read numerous texts that indicate that Jesus did die, that Luke said Jesus died for our sins and he died as a ransom for our sins. Let's go through a few scriptures here. We are going to look at these two questions. Was he a ransom? And what price did he pay for our sins? We get an answer in Luke chapter 9 where we read about the price that the Messiah would have to pay for our sins. We read, Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anyone who he was. The Son of Man must suffer many terrible things, he said. He will be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. He will be killed, but on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. Luke chapter 9, verses 21 and 22. Jesus would have to pay the ultimate price for our sins. He would pay with his life. He would pay with his blood. Does Jesus have the power to forgive sins today? Yes, he does. This is because three days after he died, he rose from the dead. And he is alive today in heaven to hear your prayers. We read in Luke chapter 18, Taking the twelve disciples aside, Jesus said, Listen, we're going up to Jerusalem, where all the predictions of the prophets concerning the Son of Man will come true. He will be handed over to the Romans and he will be mocked, treated shamefully and spit upon. They will flog him with a whip and kill him. But on the third day, he will rise again. And now we come to the proof that Jesus said his life was a payment for our sins. Yes, we see that he's going to die. Yes, we see that he's referred to as a ransom. But why did he have to die? We read about this in Luke chapter 22. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Jesus was a sacrifice. He was a ransom. His death was a payment for our sins. Let's look further for further proof about what I'm saying. Don't jump to conclusions. Hold your horses. It says in Luke chapter 24, 
And this is Jesus speaking. And he said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. You take all this stuff together and you realize that you've got Rabbi Singer on the one side saying, Luke never talked about Jesus dying for our sins. Luke never said ransom. And then we have the source text, the book of Luke. I could have gone on and find, found even more for you. But I would think that this is enough to prove that Jesus was a ransom. He had the power to forgive sins. We read in Luke chapter 5, verse 20, Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the men, Young man, your sins are forgiven. Jesus had the power to forgive sins. Now the entire Old Testament, all over the place, talks about this Messiah who's going to come who's going to free you and deliver you from your sins. He's going to be the sacrifice, the atoning death that you're looking for. And so as I presented you with this information, who are you going to believe? Luke or Rabbi Singer? 